Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. My guest experienced the wild love, you heard me right, the wild love of God. He says that everyone is meant to experience this. Trust me, this show is going to be wild. <laughs> I'm Sid Roth here with Chris Dupree, and let me tell you something, no one should have to go through what Chris went through. His dad was a bombardier in World War II, POW in Germany. Uh, he uh, was tortured in, in the worst, most, the worst fashion a human could have. Uh, he came back a war hero, but he also had a condition that no one understood back then. It was called PTSD, and Chris, for some reason, he chose you to take his anger out yeah. on. Uh, what, what happened? Uh, my dad came back. Um, no one knew that there was another side to him now. I don't even think he knew. And shortly thereafter, um, he, he married my mother and had three children. First a, a daughter, and then a, a son, and then myself. And I was a healthy, strong, energetic, full of vinegar kid. And uh, um, I ended up getting the brunt of this internal anger that, that no one, even family and friends, weren't aware of. It was just kind of contained in my house. And there was one day your mother came in unexpected, and what did she observe with her eyes? Yeah, she never saw it. was always done behind her back, and then suddenly she came in unexpectedly through the back door, and I was in the kitchen, and I was flying across the kitchen. I don't know, I was eight years old. I can't remember what it was. I was kicked, I was thrown. I hit a wall and that's when she walks in and sees the situation and takes us away and my life became very different. Uh, you said that was the first time you ever felt safe. Yeah, oh yeah, I, I just, I, I remember it so well because I was in school, we, we changed houses and the first day I came home from school, I walked in, there was a house with a loving mother, chocolate chip cookies, baking just for me and I remember feeling I wasn't crying, but I felt like it because I knew I was safe and I knew that every day I could come home and I didn't have to run and hide. Now, he became quite an athlete. In fact, he figured he'd get a scholarship. His, he had his whole life, uh, li you know, uh, lined up, but he had an injury. And so he did go to college, but in college he was depressed. Uh, and so he didn't make it in college and uh, he, he went home. But he went home to a surprise. His mother and his brother and sister, they all were not just believers, they were radical believers. And one day, your sister took you for a short car ride. What happened? Oh my goodness. Well, that's how I found out they were all believers. I, I, I picked her up to take her to her college graduation. And in the car, in a five minute drive, she tells me, Oh, by the way, I got married. I said, what? You got married? Why didn't you tell me? And she goes, well, he's an unusual man. Well, what's he like? Well, he's a prince. You married a prince? <laughs> and I, 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 I don't know about it. She goes, yes. And then she got really quiet. She goes, he's the prince of peace and his name is Jesus. <laughs> and I just started laughing and then I realized, oh, I don't want to disrespect her. I stopped and I said, I said, what else? I said, well, I, I also prophesy. I said, you, you prophesy? You tell end time things? No, no, not like that. It's like God's heart and intents come through me to other people. And I encourage them. And I just said, well, what's God sound like? And she said, well, he sounds like me. And I said, well, then I don't want him. <laughs> I've had enough of my sister over the years. I didn't want God to sound like my sister. Uh, so then you hear a voice. Oh, I, I'll never forget it. Uh, actually, my, my buddy Mike was driving the car. We pulled in, we dropped my sister off, and then we went around to the parking lot. And we're laughing hysterically about this conversation. And, and um, I'm in the back seat. He was in the front because there was another person there. And uh, I, he gets out of the car, and I start to get out from the back seat. And there's nobody in the car. It's just the two of us at this point, and I hear a voice say to me from the back seat, everything your sister just told you 
is true. Who, who was that in the back seat? Uh, a voice. <laughs> there, was, there was no, there was one, no there. one there. I turned around and looked, and Mike was 15 feet away I mean, from the wait, car. Was it, was it like an inner thought, or was it an audible voice? It sounded just like this. Everything your sister said is true. And it came, it, it sounded as clear as what I just said to you. I turned around and looked, and there's, there's nobody there. And I closed the door, and the second the door closed, I was completely sobered. I'll tell you what, you <laughs> think this is wild? <laughs> it's just starting. We'll be right back. <laughs> as I said, Rod here with Chris McCray. And, and Chris, it, it's still hard for me to comprehend. You hear the audible voice of God. Mm -hmm. You still resist. Oh, yeah. But, but <laughs> your family is persistent. Oh, and you want to get your sister off your back. So she yes. says, Chris, I want to say a prayer with you. And you say, okay. And so she said, she started this prayer, and I, I'm holding her hands because she wanted me to hold her hands and repeat after me. And if you don't believe it, don't say it. So I prayed a prayer and I kind of believed every word. And, and, and so she went out and I, I sat there and I knew that I was changed. Um, but I was fearful that being in sports for years and years, I, I, I had a mouth on me. And I, we understand. Yeah, okay, there we go. <laughs> I woke up the next morning and my, my vocabulary, my speech pattern was different. And the words that would normally come in didn't come in. As a matter of fact, I shunned them. And in which I just know, I God, everything together just tells me, you are here. You've changed my life. And I, I, it's almost like I can't wait to see what else is coming. Well, if something else did come. Yeah. He, you know, Paul said, uh, I don't know whether I was in my body or out of my body. Remember reading that? He had such an experience. What happened? Oh, I had, a, I had an hour off for lunch. I worked across the street. Always come home. Uh, I would make the same thing every day, a bologna sandwich on white bread <laughs> with mayonnaise. And so I'm standing there with my bologna sandwich and I feel breeze and I'm thinking, okay, who let the window open? What a, this is Rochester, New York in the middle of winter. And I open my eyes because of a breeze and I'm standing on a hillside. And the next thing I do is I look up and Jesus is coming down and I'm going, this is not a dream. Or is it a dream? And so I picked up a clump of grass and I put it in my mouth. Because I thought, if this is a dream, I won't taste it. And it was grass. And I spit it out. It tasted terrible. I pinched myself. And then he stands there. And then suddenly he comes and he looks at me face to face. And I am filled with shame because all I know is what I'm not. I haven't yet been told who I am. And he looks at me and he goes, I love you with a wild love. I thought, wild love? I've been brought up in a church where you do things decently and in order. And wild doesn't fit. <laughs> and he heard my thinking and he looks at me and he goes, yes, it is wild because wild means uh, it's untamed and it's uncontrolled by man. No man controls my love for you. And then I went, as wild as you want, God, as wild as you want. He actually said that to you. Oh, he said that to me, looking right at me. And there he is. And I'm now looking. I'm looking directly in his face and I can't describe it. It was the largest smile I'd ever seen on a human being. And he's looking at me. And then I, I was filled with shame. I put my head down and he takes my head in his, in his hands and he says, look at me, look at me. And now I'm face to face looking at him. I know this is not a dream. I don't know what it is. And I'm looking in, right into his face. And he goes, listen, I love you. And I went, okay. <laughs> he goes, no, I, you, you don't get it. I love you for what you're called to do and for what you, you're supposed to do with your life. You need to know this. You need to know how deeply I love you. I went, okay. He goes, good. And he took my head and put it on his chest. And he just began to rock me. And I'd never had a man's hands on me that didn't hurt me. And he's just holding me and holding me. And suddenly a ball of fire shot out of his chest, hit my chest. I found myself back in my room. My bologna sandwich was over there. And I just, I'm weeping and weeping and weeping. And I threw myself on my bed and I wept and I wept. And suddenly I go, I've got to go to work. I got to get up. And I picked up my pillow and I thought, well, I'll, I'll just take the pillowcase off because it's wet. And then when I picked it up. It was dripping from the bottom of the pillow. And I put my hand on my, my mattress and pushed my hand and water sprouted out. And I realized 20 years of pain. 
I was delivered by a face-to-face -face encounter, and through my weeping, 20 years of pain delivered my heart from the pain of my father and the abuse that I took. And <laughs> shortly after that, someone brought up his dad to him. In the past, when he would hear his dad's name, the fear, his stomach would churn, the hurt, the disappointment. And he noticed he didn't have those same feelings. And when we come back, I want you to find out what God did as far as forgiveness, because this is off the charts. Be right back. Now, this experience that Chris Dupre had uh, was so wild that he took, if you remember, he took a piece of grass, a clump of grass, and put it in his mouth. So, said, is this real? What is going on? Well, after he woke up and cried, what did you have in your mouth? Well, I woke up, I, I went back and, and wiped my tears off, went across to, to work, and, and, you know, somebody said, as soon as I said something, they said, what did you have to eat? And I said, well, I, I had a bologna sandwich. And they go, well, you've got all sorts of green stuff in your teeth there. It's, I said, what? And I, I picked up, and there was a clump of grass that came out of my teeth. Uh, I don't have grass in my living room. So. Okay, your <laughs> recollection of your dad yes. is beating after beating, welts all over your body, fear, hurt, everything, every emotion you can imagine. Yep. Uh, 1982. Yes. July 4th, as a matter yes. of fact, family gathering. Uh, and you're out in the backyard with your dad. Yes. God tells you, uh, you, you feel the presence of God, and God tells you to do something that is against every fiber of his being. <laughs> he tells you to hug your dad. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I didn't hug my dad. <laughs> I didn't grow up hugging him. Our, our physical uh, connection was not hugs. And uh, the Lord had said, I, I want you to forgive your father. Today. And I said, on the way there, it was July 4th, his favorite day of the year, July 4th celebration. And I said, well, Lord, I already forgave him. He said, no, no, face to face. I was like, oh, I don't want to go face to face with him. So I'm standing there by the garden um, and he's alone. And I go, uh, Dad, I, I have to tell you something. Um, he goes, what? He goes, it's, it's about when I was little and, and you lived with us. And he goes, yeah, what? And all I, could, all I could say was, instead of running through a list of things that I wanted to forgive him for, I just said, I just want to say that I, I love you and I forgive you for everything that happened. And he didn't say a word. I was waiting for him to say, forgive me for what, or yell, or try to, try to hit me, and nothing. And he didn't move. And the Lord said, he needs your touch. Put your arm around him. It's like, I don't do that. And I heard, now. It must have been very uncomfortable for you. Oh, it was. And so I remember putting my arm around him, thinking, I've just exposed my side if he wants to go for it. And so I put the second my hand touched his shoulder, he began to bend over and weep and weep and weep. And he was crying uncontrollably with everybody around at a July 4th picnic. It didn't matter. He is crying and he's crying. And he starts to to almost fall to the ground and I'm holding him up and he realizes he's not gonna make it. So he puts his hand over around and grabs my belt. The second he touched my waist, I bent over and I began to weep and weep. And the two of us are standing out by the garden with kids playing, dogs running, hot dogs burning. And we are just bending over, weeping uncontrollably for about three to five minutes. And some, some supernatural connection or reconnect took place during that time. And suddenly it stopped, it was over. We cleaned ourselves up and he didn't want to talk about it. So I just- But Chris, yeah. for the next nine years, yes. I have to tell you, you had the most wonderful relationship yes. with your dad, yes. but his father goes in for exploratory surgery and uh, someone's neck was just healed in Jesus' name. His father goes in for exploratory surgery, but just before he's wheeled in, Chris is there. Just briefly tell yes. me what happened. <clears throat> he's, he's lying in the stretcher and they, they, they say, okay, say goodbye to your father. So I, I, we've been now been hugging and kissing for, for years. That's what we do. And I shake his hand like this. All the doctors are there and I shake his hand. I love you, dad. And he's holding my arm and he goes, we don't, we don't do, do this. this. And I go, uh oh, I know what we do. <laughs> 
and he pulls me into the stretcher on top of him with one toe on the ground, and he begins to kiss my cheeks and kissing back and forth, turns my head and goes, this is my son. I love him, he's great. And then they begin to wheel him away and he, and he goes, stop, turn the stretcher around, I can't see my son. So they turn the stretcher around and begins to, they, they're pulling him away and he goes, love you. And I go, love you, dad. He goes, no, no, I love you more. And he pulls out his heart and he goes, uh, 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 and he throws it at me. And I pull out my heart and I throw it at him and he pushes it in. And the last thing he goes, he starts kissing his fingers over and over and over again. I'm thinking, what's he doing? And then he turns into me and goes. <laughs> and I just stood there and the nurse next to me is starting to cry. And I, I just pretend like he's killing me with love bullets. And <laughs> she starts crying. She goes, I have never seen this kind of affection between a father and the son. Has it always been like that? And I said, oh, have I got a story to tell you? And he, they pulled him into the elevator and the door began to close and he began to move over on the stretcher while the door closed kissed his thumb put it in the air and said i love you now you can experience god's wild love now have you ever heard the song it's one of my favorites probably one of the most intimate love songs of all time dance with me i just happen to have the author of that song here Chris Dupre, would you go to the music set and sing that song? I would be honored. Chris is going to impart the wild love of God upon you. Are you interested? Yes. Yes. Me too. <laughs> yes. So Lord, I thank you. Out of all the kinds of beings you could be, you are love. You reveal yourself as love. And so, Lord, we walk through that open door right now. We just say all the lies that have been thrown our way of what you are and what you're not, and let every lie now be silenced in the name of Jesus. And I pray for an impartation, as, as Paul encouraged the Ephesians, that they, they'd see and understand and know the depth and the level. He said that you'd know the depth, the width, the height, the length, to know the love of Christ which passes understanding. So, Lord, I pray that spirit now, that spirit of wisdom, that spirit of revelation, that it would go through, it would go through the airways, it would go into the hearts and into minds of each one that's hearing, that's listening right now, in Jesus' name. Amen. I was singing a song, We Will Dance on the Streets That Are Golden, in my living room years ago. Well, my daughter began to dance around the living room with a veil. And it was so beautiful, this, this beautiful little 12-year-old dancing unashamed before her father. I said, Lord, I love the multitude, but I just want to watch her dance. And I felt him say to me, that's how I, that's how I, I see it. I, I love that. I love the multitude. But when one person says yes to dance with me, my heart rejoices. Five minutes later, this song was written. Come and dance with me, oh love of my soul. To the song of all songs, come and romance me. O oh, love of my soul, to the song of all songs, Lord, I'll go where you go, and I will run where you run, and I will dance. I will dance with you. 